But, my dear Mosca, are you certain your plan will work? Trust me to see your hopes for Gildo, Master, for they are like their blossoms of promise, timely fruit in all that wait for them maturely. Now, do but listen. A Carpaccio will arrive straight from his grave, and I shall hide the number and you will hear of his father's disinheritance. After that, I shall send for Corvino to bring his wife to you. <laughs>
asked, and spirited, and dab, betrayed to beggary. No! Where shall I run most wretched shame and then to beat out my unlucky brains? Oh, that I ever lived to see my life, my hopes, my spirits, my patron thus desperately entrapped by my error! Thou hast me be miserable! <laughs> uh, and myself, sir, who would have thought he would have eavesdropped so? What shall we do? What shall we do? I will end my days. I will end my days in court and then in an empty cell, bereft, bereft of all my possessions. What shall we do? I do not know. <laughs> Would you hang me or cut my throat? Let us die like Romans since we live like Christians. <laughs> Who's there? Is it officers come to apprehend us? Oh, I do already feel the firebrand hissing at my forehead. To your couch, sir, and resume playing the dying man. Oh. Now, now, Oscar. Oh, ruined, <laughs> bewildered. Your son, I know not how, were acquainted with your purpose to disinherit him. He then entered our house with violence, drew his sword, sought for you, called you wretched and unnatural, and vowed he would kill you. Oh, this actual disinheriting, indeed. <laughs> that, here is the will. I've done what you said and made your master mine heir. How does he do? You think he'll die shortly? I fear he'll die today. Oh, die today? No, how last day? Oh, Shall just give him a try? Oh, by no means. Well, well, I'll not force you. Eh, I'll be off then. Let's hope he dies tomorrow. <laughs> this lost there is a name, I see. Parasite! And most timely welcome. <laughs> Just in time to discover your tricks, and you're the only heir. Ha! How have you been told that to? And what's this device about a will? A plot for you, madam. Come, do not put your tricks upon me. I <laughs> shall set them. But did you hear it? <laughs> I had heard that Camaccio had made your patron his heir. Oh, by my device, a drawn to it to my plot, in the hope that you. Patron should reciprocate? Oh, you're ahead of me, madam. But more than that, I told his son about it. I brought him here where he might hear his father disinherit him. The hope was that the unnaturalness of the deed would sure enrage him that he would do some violence upon his father. And then he would be sent to jail where he inherits nothing. All the more for you. <laughs> you inherit my master's fortune and Corbatro's as well. Truth be my conscience and comfort. My only aim was to dig you a fortune out of these two rotten sepulchres. Oh, my apologies. I cry thee mercy. How successful was this? Oh, most hapless, you must help. Whilst we were waiting for Corbatro, in comes Corvino's wife, sent hither by our husband. No, no, on a visitation, I'll tell you why uh, later. And uh, Bellario, forced to wait so long, grew impatient, rushes forth, seizes the lady, and makes her swear, or he would murder her, that was his vow, that she affirms that my patron would have done her breath, which how unlikely it is you can see. <laughs> and with that pretext, they have gone to the court to plead their case. For Benario wants my master in jail so that he can keep his inheritance to himself. Who force cries of rape in order to hide an attempted murder? It can be that they will succeed, but just in case, I'll use my influence with the court to speak first. I'll defend your patron with all my might. You do most nobly, madam, to us all laboured for your good. Where's the husband and the father? Have them be sent for straight and brought to the Senate House. Uh, I, I will fetch them forthwith. If Volpone goes to jail, his goods will be seized and I will get nothing. This must be stopped. <laughs> oh, patron, so you must go and pray for our success. <coughs> oh. Need makes devotion heaven your labours bless. <laughs> I 
every sit upon thy thundering tongue to be flatter adversaries. Thanks, worthy Moscow. Well, now you know the carriage of the business. Your constancy is all that is required unto the safety of it. Have the lies been safely conveyed amongst us? We besmirch the reputations of Benario and Celia so the judges do not believe them. No, you know <coughs> your task? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do not worry about this. Secure his statement. <clears throat> but do the judges know the truth? Oh, by no means. Uh, I have devised an elaborate tale, and that shall hide the fact that you picked your wife. Here, <laughs> <laughs> just testify to her infidelities to swing the judges toward our cause. Here they come, have done. <laughs> Jail. What proof 
proofs of you of this. I humbly pray, Your Honours, that no credit be given to this woman's mercenary tongue. Her soul moves with her fear. Okay, you hey. forget yourself, young man. Nay, hey, nay, hey, Your Honours, let him have scope. Can anyone imagine that he would spare his accuser that would not spare his parent? Well, produce your proofs. Signor Corbaccio, the father. What, what, what must I do now? Your testimony is craved. What? Speak to the lady. Oh, I'll have my mouth stuck first with her. My heart hates to acknowledge him. I disown him. He is another stranger to my lines. How have they made you do this? Oh, speak not, thou monster of men, swine, goat, wolf. Speak not, thou viper. <laughs> I will sit down rather than argue against the venom of such a father turned madman. See how much he hates me. My next witness, Signor Corvino, the husband. <laughs> <laughs> This woman, your honours, <laughs> this woman is a whore of the most hot exercise. These eyes have seen her glued to this piece of cedar, this fine, well timbered. Please, Your <laughs> I hope she is onward to her damnation. If indeed there be a hell worse than woman <laughs> <laughs> and whore. Oh, 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 oh. <coughs> Stand aside. G give her air. This woman has too many moods. I do begin to suspect fraud. May her feigning not take away your wisdoms, but this day she baited the stranger with her loose eyes and lascivious kisses, and he is a grave English knight, and I believe you may provide proof from the man's wife. As she is outside, I shall go and fetch her. These things do strike me with wonder. My honours, if I might try some details of the encounter, they were seen in the gondola. I do thank you that you have come today to testify against the lewd harlot. Even though you could not find Sir Politic with her, I am glad you have found her. Strap it. You will remember the words that I told you to say. You can rely on me, especially with everything you said would come after. It <laughs> may as thou wilt, but to be resolute, madam. Oh! <laughs> Here, the test. 
testimony comes that will convince and put to utter dumbness their bold tongues. See, here, here is the ravisher, the rider on men's wives, the great impostor, the grand voluptuary. But mark, see these hands. Are they not sufficient to stroke a lady's breasts? But perhaps he does dissemble. So he does. Do you have him tortured? Let's test him then with burning hands. I have heard the wrapped up cure the gout. Let's give it to him courtesy and cure him of a malady. No, it cannot be. Instead, I crave your care for this good gentleman whose life has been much endangered by their fables. And as for them, when vicious people are hot, damned deeds are done with the greatest confidence. What do you think? Guilty? It is a pity two such prodigies to live. These two are creatures. I have an earthquake in me. To treat the court with such contempt. We believe you. You have blackened the name of an innocent nobleman and falsely accused him of crimes he could not possibly commit. <laughs> Take them into custody. You shall hear later what punishment the court decrees upon you. You have done a worthy service to the court. Be sure to attend the same sentencing later on today. Let the old gentleman be returned with care. I am sorry our credulity wronged him. The session is now finished. <laughs> and affairs beyond all others. Now, to business, Moscow. Um, have you made an inventory of all the goods that I get when Balcony dies? I will do so instantly. Well, make sure you include everything. That's bedding, curtains, <laughs> uh, plate, monies, jewels. It shall be done, but first we must deduct the advocate's fee. Right. I'll pay her. You'll be too prodigal. Two ducats will do. Oh, six. <laughs> that ought a great deal. This must be considered. Ah, yeah, three. And that's the end of it. <laughs> what bountiful burdens, what horrid strange offence must he have committed against nature in his youth to have earned such an ugly old age? <laughs> must not doubt that I am conspiring with your rivals. I am all yours. My trust is complete. Guys, which I never disliked until now, for having convinced the public of my diseases, I have convinced myself of them too. <laughs> my God, I tell you, my left leg has begun to have cramp. Well, I must strike it out and be merry. <laughs> Give me a glass. Give me a bowl. A lusty wine. To break this humour from my soul. I 
could fright off any, any knave that is set against me. <laughs> this heaped his life. Oh, now, sir, oh, the deer is clear again. Exquisite, master. Was it not carried out learnedly? Mm. And stoutly, good wits are greatest in extremities. This was our masterpiece. We cannot think to go beyond this, to gull the court. And to divert the torrent of guilt <laughs> upon the innocent. And <laughs> how the Maltori did to make so rare a music out of his scores, and not pick up our faults, sir. Ah, it is such a joy to see them being cheated. But methinks one more time will be worth it, for I have begun now to vex them all. How mean you, my lord? Well, I have told my servants to give out about the streets that I am dead. <laughs> I told them, I told them it was only a joke, but they were to report my death with sadness and with conviction. Oh, what do you intend by this? Well, I shall have instantly my vulture, crow, and raven come flying hither at the news to peck the carrion, <laughs> all eager and greedy with expectation. Well, they will be sorely disappointed. For I shall make you my heir. <laughs> and you can show them my will. And open the chest, open the chest, and fetch forth the will with the blanks on it. And I will straight put thy name there. Oh, it will be rare, sir. Aye. <laughs> when they gape, and see how they are deluded, thou art to use them most scurvy. But what did they ask after the body? Oh, say it was corrupted. I shall say it stunk, sir, and was compelled to have it coffined up and sent away instantly. Anything thou wilt. Uh, fetch, fetch an account book, pen and ink, as if you were making an inventory of all your new possessions. I shall go behind the screen, listen, and sometime peep out to see how they look and to see how the blood leaves their faces. Oh, it will provide me with a feast of laughter. <laughs> see who that is. It is the torture. She has the quickest scent. Ah, I am to my place, thou to thy posture. Play it with craft and torture the Oh, sir, you must expect curses until they burst. The fox fares ever best when he is cursed. <laughs> How now, my Moscow? Turkish carpets, nine. <laughs> Taking an inventory. That's good. The two suits of bedding. Where's the will? Let me read that the while. Oh, does he come now? Oh, a cloth of gold, two more. Is it done? Uh, dost thou not hear me? Several velvet hangings. Does it not count? Aye, now they, master. Uh, what is the advocate doing here in this? Be the man. 
But Moscow, two cabinets didn't but deceive me. One of enemy, what do you count on it? And the other is Mother of Pearl. I am busy. You can understand, I am sure, that this is a fortune that was thrown upon me, not at my seeking. Mm. I shall be at leisure to talk to you all tomorrow or the next day. <laughs> I must have a fairer answer than that. Pray, uh, ma'am. Quit my house. Nay, raise no tempest with your looks. Remember what your ladyship offered me. Enough. Go home and use your poor husband well, or I'll start spreading rumours. Go and be melancholic. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> Mosca, pray a word. Lord, would you not take your dispatch hence yet? Methinks of all you should have been the example to have gone first. Why should you stay here? With what thought? What promise? Why, sir, I know thee for an ass. You would have eagerly been a pig to your wife if fortune would have led you. Yet you think all your good works here may hide all your bad. You go home too. Be melancholic or mad. <laughs>
slave, he was the instrument of it all. Where is the knave? Bring him and entreat his presence as the clearing of some doubts. Your Honours, this woman is distracted. She just proved it by saying she wished to be old Volpone's heir, who is now dead. How? Is Volpone dead? Oh, truly dead, Your Honours. Do not believe this woman. She speaks out of envy because that parasite made off with the thing that she gave for. Your hopes were the same as mine, Corvino, but I would use modesty. Please, it's your honour to look over these notes, for hearing is the clear truth. Now, this seems a labyrinth. This is confusion. The court will be in recession while we read the papers here submitted. To make a snare for my own neck and run my head into it willfully with laughter. Oh, when I was newly escaped, I was free and clear. Then, out of mere wantonness, oh, what dull devil was in this brain of mine when I devised it and Mosca gave it second? He must now help to seal up this vein or we bleed dead. Oh, what a vile wretch was I that could not bear my fortune soberly. If it be possible, I will bribe Voltori with new hopes. Oh, when I crossed her, then, then I lost myself. These things can never be reconciled. <coughs> she here professes that Benari was wronged and that Celia was brought to Volpone, forced by her husband, who then left. Most True. Oh, heaven, how just thou art. But that Volpone would have ravished Celia, she held utterly false, knowing of his impotence. Oh, here comes our officer. The parasite will be here shortly, Your Honours. His coming should cure all. Uh, yet, yet it is still misty. I think you should know that Volpone lives I have it on good authority from his very mouth. You are the same, your hope's the same, and this was but a jest. How? To try and see if you were firm and how you truly felt. Art sure he lives? I say it with my life. Mosca will be here soon to confirm it. <gasps> Me, I was too violent. How can I redeem it? Corvino said you were possessed. Then appear so. She cannot have written this. It makes no sense. Do you know this, madam? Deny it, forswear it, know it not. Yes, I do know it well. It is my hand, and all that it contains is false. Mm. The devil made me do it. Ha! I told you she was possessed. Treachery. Oh, what a maze is this? Is he not guilty, then? We there name the parasite. No more than his good patron, old Volpone. Why, he's dead. Oh, no, your honours. He lives. What? Lives? Oh, this is subtler yet. You said he was dead. Never. You said so. I heard so. Mosca! Mosca! Oh, I was nearly lost. Voltore betrayed all, but now it is recovered. All's on the hinge again. Say that I am living. Most reverend honours, what a busy name is this. I would have attended your grave pleasure sooner were it not for the funeral of my dear patron who died. <laughs> Must not cheat me out of all. I'll just take half then. You'll <laughs> sooner be hanged. Cry not so loud, they will hear you. Did you not affirm that Volpone is alive? Never. <laughs> My honours, he lives. You said so. Yes, the officer there told me. Your honours, your honours, I did and shall confirm it with my life. Very well, you shan't have half. This, this creature told me. 
Aha, uh -huh. you say I cannot now afford it so cheap. <laughs> no! Oh, what drunken man is this? <laughs> if such an instance as this is allowed to pass upon me, I am silent. Twas not for this for which you sent, I hope. Master, Master, wilt thou betray me? <laughs> <laughs> I thank you, your honor. Soft, soft, wicked, and lose all I have. If I confess, it cannot be much more. Are you mad? I must be resolute. The fox shall hear uncase. Patron! Ah, nay, not now. My ruin shall not come alone. I am Volpone, <laughs> and this my knave. Your honours, since we can expect nothing but a sentence, may it be swift, and let it not disappoint. <laughs> the knot is now undone by a miracle. Nothing could be more clear. Or can more prove these innocent. <laughs> Heaven could not long let such gross crimes be hid. If this be held the right way to get riches, may I be poor. <laughs> this is not profit, but torment. Can you plead aught to stay the course of justice? In that case, first the parasite. You appear to have been the chiefest minister in all these wicked falsehoods, and have, with your impudence, abused the court, for which our sentence is first that thou be wit, then live in perpetual imprisonment in our galleys. <laughs> thou, Volconi, by blood and rank a gentleman, canst not fall under like censure, but our judgment on thee is that all thy wealth be straightway confiscated <gasps> and transferred to the hospital for the incurables. <laughs> Since most was gotten by imposture, by feigning, lame, gout, palsy, and such diseases, thou art to lie in prison, cramped in irons, till thou be sick and lame indeed. <laughs> this is called mortifying the books. <laughs> Thou, Voltore, to take away the scandal that has given all worthy men of that profession, thou art banished from their fellowship and our state forever. Covaccio, we here proclaim that thy son shall possess all thy estate and confine thee to the monastery of San Spirito, where, since thou knowest not how to live well here, then thou shalt know how to die well there. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> <laughs> thou, Corvino, shalt be straight embarked from thine own house and rode round Venice through the Grand Canal, wearing a cap with fair, long ass's ears <laughs> instead of horns, and thereafter mount a pillory to be ashamed in public. Yes, and have my eyes beaten out by stinking fish, bruised fruit, and rotten eggs. Oh well, at least I won't see my shame. <laughs> <laughs> and to expiate the wrongs done to thy wife, thou art to silence her home to her father with her dowry treble. <laughs> <laughs> you may leave the court secure in the knowledge of your true innocence. We thank, thank you, you Cecilia! <laughs> <Sit here. laughs> These are all our judgments, which may not be revoked. You can begin, when crimes are done, and passed, and to be punished, to think what your crimes are. Let all that see these Vices, thus rewarded, take heart 
and love to study them. Mischiefs feed like beasts till they be fat, and then they bleed. seasoning of a play is the applause. Now, though Volpone the fox be punished by the laws, he yet doth hope there is no suffering due for any crime he has done against you. <laughs> if there be, censure him. Here he doubtful stands. If not, be cheerful and clap your hands. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 